A few weeks ago, we released a video covering all of the targeting options for the Hulu self-service ad platform. In that video, I mentioned it's important to know the targeting options first, because if you can't reach your target audience on a platform, there's really no reason to use it. So I encourage you to watch that video first. If anything, pause this video, go watch the Hulu targeting options video first, and then come back. I'll wait for you. Okay, welcome back. Now that you know that Hulu is a channel that you want to use to reach your audience, I want to give you a rundown of how the whole thing works. So in this video, we're going to start off talking about the requirements and minimums to get a Hulu account set up. We're then going to be in the interface for a little bit just to get familiar with all the different aspects of it. And then I'll walk you through a campaign setup from start to finish. The first thing I want to cover are the two requirements for running ads on Hulu. They're pretty simple, but they're very important. The first is that there is a spend minimum of $500. So if you are trying to run ads on Hulu and you're not going to commit to spending up to $500, you'll not be able to do that. Overall, I think $500 is probably a relatively low bar and most of you can meet that. But just in case that would be beyond your level of comfort, make sure that you do have $500 to allocate to a test for Hulu ads before you get started. Second is that as of the recording of this video, which is in early 2022, right between April and May, you need to register as a brand, not an agency. Hulu is not currently taking agencies on the platform. It's focusing mostly on brands. So what that means is that when you go to the URL below, which is home.admanager.hulu.com, and you look to sign up for the Hulu Ad Manager, when you get to the section that says, tell us more about your business that you can see an image of here, you need to choose, I am an advertiser representing my own brand. Currently, the advertising account I have access to is a client who registered on their own, and then I'm just simply going to run the campaigns. So if you're an agency looking to get access to Hulu sooner rather than later for some of your clients, it's in your best interest to have them set up the account and then grant you access to it by sharing the logins so you can get campaigns running that way. With those quick things out of the way, let's hop into the platform and start to give an overview of what all is even in there. Now for an overview of the Hulu Ads Manager interface itself. If you're familiar with running campaigns in self-service accounts, which I'm guessing most of you are if you're watching a Paid Media Pros video, this platform should be pretty easy to pick up for you because it follows most of the same things that most of the other platforms have as well. It might be a little bit limited at the moment, but again, this is still relatively new. It's still even got beta in the logo name up in the top left. One caveat for this entire video is that currently this account has not been running. The client is currently working on creative, so we don't actually have any stats in here to show you, but I do think we'll be able to give you a good overview of what you can expect once you hop into the platform. So the first thing is that the main page of the Hulu ad manager is going to be the campaigns page, and there are relatively minimal pages within the account itself. You'll see here that the information we get when we're on this page is the name of the campaign, which right now I have as sample audience. It then has the ad status, the start and end date, the budget, the target impressions expected for the budget allocated, the campaign status, and then there are a handful of actions which we'll talk about once we go through the campaign setup at the end of the video. You can filter for different campaign status and make sure that you're only looking at the ones you want to on this current page, but you'll also notice that there are no performance metrics here. There's not even any columns for them and there's no area where you can then adjust the columns. So I'm assuming that even once we run campaigns, this page will only show this information and it likely won't show anything else. Again, I don't know that for a fact, but that's my guess. The only other thing you can do from this page is create a campaign, which again, we'll do at the end of it. So let's go through the other two main pages. As I mentioned, there are no performance metrics on this page. Those are likely going to live in this reports section. So let's head over to this page. Now you can see there's an entire reports interface, which should be relatively easy to adapt to once we actually have some stats in here. You can search for your report and then you'll be able to filter using these different pieces. The run date as well as the status will help you figure out which reports you're looking at based on this table down below. This will likely have all of the reports that you've created for the account. And as you can see here, we haven't created any for this account just yet. 
I could either use the button that is now off the screen that says create your first report, or we can go over here and create a new report. I'm hoping that a little later on down the line, once we have some performance metrics in here, we'll have enough to put together another video on these reports to show you what they look like. But for now, I just wanted to give a quick overview and give you an idea of what to expect from the platform. So over off to the right, we now have the report builder. You can see there are two options at the top. You can get a campaign summary, which is a zip file containing delivery summaries across available targeting options, or you can get a detailed data report, which is detailed performance metrics for one or more campaigns based on one or more target audience data selections, including audiences, locations, genres, and platforms. So at this level, if you're trying to see high level stats for your different targeting options, a campaign summary is gonna be the right choice. But if you're looking for more detailed data, we might wanna come down here and click this button next to it. For the rest of this section, I'm going to leave the option on detailed data report because if you noticed, the adjustments down below in the rest of this builder changed a little bit and this has more options, but it also retains the scheduling options that the campaign summary report did. You'll then be able to give your report a name, which hopefully you put something clever in there so you'll be able to tell what you're looking at later on. You can then select which campaigns you want to be a part of this report. Again, I don't have any campaigns, so there's nothing there. But based on the description above, you can choose one or more campaigns. So likely a handful of campaigns, only a couple, or just one, depending on what you're looking at. And then the advanced control you get with this new data segment piece is going to be around these dimensions. So you get to select what targeting data you want included. You will get daily impression counts broken out across your chosen targeting options for locations, audience segments, platforms, or genres. If you want each of these targeting options, all you need to do is check the box next to each of them and they'll all be added to your report. From what I can tell here, there's no limitation on the number of dimensions. So just select the box next to the ones that you're looking for. And then report delivery, you'll see for both of the different report types, whether it's the summary or this detailed option. For the detailed version, this language is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna say email now, which means it's gonna take a little bit for the data to be populated and then it will be emailed to you for you to review later. For the campaign summary, the language just says download now because it's a relatively quick report, it'll just download immediately in the browser. So these detailed data reports are gonna take a little longer to pull. You can also schedule this report to be recurring so again, if you have the right naming convention up above, that's going to be important for you to know what reports are coming to you when and what they're trying to show you. So if I click the dial here, you can see that we can get reports emailed to us on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, depending on what you need. Relatively simple. Again, I'm sorry there's no data here, but hopefully later on we'll be able to show you something with some stats. But overall, you get the idea of what you can do reporting-wise in Hulu, and it's relatively limited compared to other platforms, considering that we're only going to be able to see impression data from what we can tell at this point. For now, I'm going to X out of this report builder. The last of the main pages within Hulu Ad Manager is going to be the Ad Gallery. Here you'll be able to see your ads that are approved, pending, and the draft ads that you have available. And you can also upload the ads directly into the gallery so that you don't have to do it every single time during the ad creation process. This is going to be very similar to the Google Ads asset library that we've released a video for a little bit ago. If you want to check that out, you can watch the video at the top of the screen right now. But effectively, this just makes it so you can have a library of ads to pull from without having to upload them each time you're creating a new campaign. Just like any other platform, there is a section for notifications on your account as well as a help section. You'll also notice that there's a contact us kind of chat function looks like down in the bottom right. And then under your account name, sorry, we have it blurred out, but you can see that you can either sign out or view your account. I'm not gonna go to the account page because we'll have to blur everything out, but there are only two sections in that entire account portion of the Hulu ad manager. There's a page that shows you all of your billing information and your company information for when you signed up. And then there's a page that shows you all the transactions that have been processed for your account. That's it. There's nothing else in there. So it's relatively limited, but just shows you the type of information in your account if you need to change it for whatever reason. For the last portion of this video, I want to go through and set up a campaign from scratch in Hulu Ads so you'll know what information you need before starting and what to expect when you start putting your campaigns together. So let's hop back to the campaigns page. And then I'm going to come over here and click create campaign. Hulu does a good job at a high level of showing you the five different stages we're going to go through for this campaign setup. So setup, budget, targeting, ad, and review. So the first thing we're going to do is create a campaign name. I don't intend on saving this campaign once we get to it later on. 
For now, I'm just giving it a placeholder name, so we'll be able to tell it apart from the previous campaign once we get started. And then I click Next. Now we choose our campaign date range. You can see here that you can submit a campaign up to three months in advance, so you can't have a start date more than three months in the future. And your campaign can run for a total of 12 months. It does suggest that you allow at least three business days for Hulu to review and approve all of your ads. So if you're trying to start a campaign on a certain date, be sure that your ads are already in the Hulu platform more than three days in advance. I'm just gonna pick a month in the future and set up my campaign for it. Now we'll click next. Here we tell Hulu what we want the budget for that campaign date run to be. The minimum is $500, but you can put in pretty much any information you want in here. And then it also mentions that it will calculate the estimated impressions based on your targeting options. Granted, we haven't done any targeting just yet. So there's also the caveat saying that it will change with your targeting selections. So it'll give a high level estimate on this page and then tweak that later on in the graph to the right once we start adding in targeting options. I just set the minimum at $500, and you can see that we're estimated to get about 15,000 impressions for the campaign. Let's go ahead and go to the next step. Now we're into all of the targeting options that are available on Hulu. For this video, I'm gonna give you a very high level, but if you want a more detailed review of all of the targeting options available on the platform, I highly encourage you to watch the video of the targeting options that I mentioned in the intro. So if you didn't watch it then, maybe it's a good idea to watch it now. There are five main categories for targeting on Hulu. The first is going to be location. You can target by zip code or city, state, and DMA. And if you leave this blank or skip this step, your ad may be shown for any location. Just as a heads up, you are able to skip all of the targeting options, and that means that you'll show to basically anybody on the Hulu platform. For now, I'm gonna skip it, just so we can get through this demo. Next will be age and gender targeting. Pretty basic, so let's keep it moving. Next will be audience targeting and you can break down the target audience on the platform by behavior, demographics, interests, and ownership categories. So there's a lot of different available audiences here. Again, if you skip it, you're gonna target basically just the general Hulu audience, which will be anybody in the target locations with the demographics that you've set in previous steps. Next, we get to choose platform targeting, so which device type we want our ads to show on. And lastly, we get to set some genre targeting, whether it's targeting or excluding certain types of content that we want our ads to show up next to. You'll notice that none of the budget and impression numbers have changed since I first started setting up the campaign, and that's because I didn't limit anything. If I were to have opted into some of the different targeting options, whether opting out of certain demographics or targeting into certain audiences or focusing on certain genres, all of the budget and impression estimates will have changed to reflect what those limited targeting settings would be. So as you're building your campaign, make sure you're keeping an eye on the right hand side to ensure that you get the right amount of scale and that you know what to expect performance wise out of your Hulu ads campaign. In the next section, you'll upload your ads, and you can see here that there is the option to upload a video. I would also guess that once we have ads in this platform, this builder will change that will allow you to opt into and utilize videos that are already part of your ad gallery. But again, one of the limitations of this demo is that I don't have that set up yet, so you'll just have to use your imagination. You can see the different information available for the formatting, and there is an entire section here of helpful tips for you to upload your ad. Just like with some of the other things, we plan on putting together a video in the future talking about the specifics of the ad formats on Hulu. So for now, I'm just gonna skip those. Once you're finished building it, you'll have an option to review your campaign, very similar to what LinkedIn does, to where you'll have this one screen where you can see all of the information that you have set up. Obviously, I didn't opt into pretty much anything, so all of this is gonna be just the default settings. And then we do have the error off to the right that's telling me that I have an ad missing, but again, reminding me just to make sure that it's uploaded within three business days. So if everything looks good, which considering I'm not actually doing anything, I think it looks great, I'm just gonna click proceed to submit. And now we're back to the main campaigns page, and we can see that in addition to the original sample audience campaign that I had, we also now have the campaign creation overview, even though the name's getting cut off. So the last thing I wanna do, as promised earlier, is show you the actions you can take on this page for each campaign. So if I come over here and hover over each of these icons, you can see that the pencil will allow me to edit the campaign. So if I click on this, it'll take me right back into the builder that I was in before. I'll go through each step and adjust things how I wanted to. The next option is to duplicate the campaign. So if I really like what I'm doing here and I just wanna duplicate it for a new time range, like maybe I want it to run in July, or if I wanna duplicate everything and then only make a couple of tweaks, 
duplicating this campaign is going to be a really easy option there. And then the last piece we have is to delete the campaign. So for whatever reason, I decide I don't want this campaign in here anymore. All I have to do is click this trash can, just like this. Hulu will make sure that I'm very certain that I want to delete this campaign. I say yes. And then after longer than I would have thought, the campaign has been deleted. Overall, the Hulu ad platform should feel very familiar to anybody who runs campaigns in all of these self-serve platforms that we talk about on the Paid Media Pros channel because it does follow suit with most of those interfaces. This one might not be the most robust, but again, we're shifting back to a traditional TV style type of advertising. So it's not gonna have nearly as many bells and whistles as some of the other platforms like Google and Facebook ads have. Even though this entire account was empty and I didn't get to really show you anything with hard details behind it, hopefully this overview has given you an understanding of what to expect once you get into Hulu. It's given you an understanding of the requirements you need to meet to actually get into the platform and then make you feel confident once you're in the platform of setting up your first campaign and knowing all the different steps it's gonna take for you to get active. If you have any other questions or have any suggestions for other videos on Hulu or quite frankly, any other platform, feel free to drop us a note in the comments down below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you wanna get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.